to get a template configuration file, you can just scroll down to this link and click on the link that says practice configuration file for sandbox items. This will take you to a GitHub page. And here you see what the configuration file looks like. It's much simpler than the metadata description files. Uh, and it's quite easy to hack. You can just go in and change the P numbers and what you want to call the column names and then save the new version of the file. So you can use this uh, as an example and change it to whatever you want. It contains examples of various kinds of properties, properties that use dates, monolingual text, items, URIs, and so forth. In order to download this file, you need to go to the raw button, which is over here on the right, right click on it, and then select save link as. When the dialog comes up, then you want to navigate to the wikidata underscore test folder that you created. And you can go ahead and leave the file name as it is and save it not in the data folder, but just in the wikidata test folder. Now, one thing that Mac users need to be a little careful of, and that is sometimes when you download files from GitHub, the file name, depending on your settings, may have .text automatically appended on the end of it. So after you've downloaded the file, go ahead and check and make sure that the name of the file is config.json and not config.json.txt. If it has .text on the end, just delete the .text part of it. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up in my text editor so that we can take a look at it. I will open it with textedit.app, which is what most Mac users are going to have. And in this particular case, we are not actually going to change anything that's in here, but let's go ahead and take a look at it a little bit. Um, there in the file, there's a description of two different CSV files. One of them is the artworks.csv file. And down at the bottom, there's a second one called workdepicts.csv. And we'll talk about why we're going to put the data in these two separate CSV files. The other thing that's significant here is that the path where the actual data are going to live um, is right here. As you may recall, we decided to put the data in a subfolder below um, the main test folder. And so that's why I have the path pointing to this data subfolder. This we can just ignore. This we can ignore for now. The manage descriptions is a way that you control the labels that are in the file. So if you set this value to true, then it'll create labels and descriptions for all the languages that you list here. So I've listed English and Spanish. So it is going to create those. In the case of the second CSV file, I set this equal to false. So it'll have a column with uh, a label, but it will not actually use it for anything. And it will not create a description column. It's just simply to help you understand where you are in the table. And the properties, we will just leave the way they are. You can see one of them is P31, which is instance of and has values that are items. In this case, I'm not using any qualifiers or references with that. But um, here is an example of another property, P217, which is inventory number. And that property has a value that is a string. So if I want to associate qualifiers and references with the property, um, I put the qualifiers in this first square bracket. So we are imagining that the item is an artwork that is in a gallery. And so uh, the qualifier collection tells us what collection this inventory number is for. 
And then I'm going to use two pretty standard reference properties, reference URL, which is P854, and P813, which is retrieved. Retrieved has a value that's a date. Reference URL has a value that's a URI. And then there are some other properties down here, which we'll just leave as they are. 